What's interesting is, um, you know, so Bradley Manning is alleged to have taken three databases, two that belonged to DOD and one which belonged to the State Department, which the State Department had basically downloaded a tenth of their complete database of diplomatic cables and put it onto SuperNet, which is, the, which is DOD's classified network. And there was a hearing in mid-March about it was, it was Joe Lieberman and Susan Collins, and they wanted to make sure that DOD and the State Department and so on were still sharing information because that's their big shtick after the underwear bomber. But what became clearer about that is both the State Department and DOD kind of gave their timeline by which they responded to the leaks. And DOD said, well, I mean, DOD arrested Manning uh, sometime around May 29th. And it wasn't until WikiLeaks published the Afghan war logs in late July, where DOD said, let's put together two commissions to study whether or not we're exposed. So you know, it's, as, it's as if they didn't believe the chat logs that, that were published in early June and that they surely had, had possession of before that. Um, they didn't believe anything that Manning had said uh, in those chat logs, and that, so they didn't believe he had these databases until they actually were published by, Wik by WikiLeaks. So yeah, DOD, wait two months, and then uh, put together two commissions. And then the State Department, again, the reason Adrian Lamo had turned in Bradley Manning purportedly was because of these 250,000 State Department cables. The State Department also must have seen those chat logs. They waited two months in response to the Afghan war logs. They started figuring out what of which subsection, the 10% of their cables that are online, made it on SerpaNet. And then only two months later, when the New York Times came to them and said, OK, we're going to go with this, did they really start responding? Now, to the State Department's credit, the State Department seems to have reasonably good security on their own databases. DOD is a SIP. And one of the things that came out in this hearing, and, and it's important to go back. In 2008, somebody took a thumb drive that was infected with malware, put it into some computers, we think, in Iraq, and badly infected DOD's network. And after that, DOD kept saying, no more removable media in our networks, no more removable media. And yet, two years later, allegedly, Bradley Manning walked into a DOD computer with a Lady Gaga CD and downloaded three large databases, removable media. So they didn't fix the problem. They waited two months to begin to, to figure out what holes they had in their networks. And what came out at this hearing is that um, there's that one hole, the removable media thing. DOD is going to keep 12% of its computers attached to SerperNet still accessible to removable media for the foreseeable future. Second problem from like a normal security standpoint is um, you should have some, like uh, most mid-sized corporations have in their network, they have like a hard key that gives you an up-to-date password if you want to access the network. Um, my husband works in the auto industry, he has one. And, um, and DOD has that, has a version of that on their unclassified network. They don't have that on their classified network. And that means as people go in and access their database, they're not, their activities online are not tied to any one individual person. DOD says, well, we're working on a fix. It'll be fixed by 2013. The other thing that, uh, you know, kind of a normal security thing that you should have is, is some kind of audit so that if there's unusual activity on your network, it'll get triggered in software and then a human being can go back and review why is somebody downloading the entire State Department database allegedly onto a Lady Gaga CD and then that, sh that if you had that kind of software audit in place then what is alleged to have happened would never have happened. DOD doesn't have that on SuperNet and again they're not going to have it in place until after they get these key cards into place so 2013. And so what DOD is telling us is this was a tremendous leak. We have to strip this man naked to try and get information to solve this leak. Oh my God, national security. But we're not going to fix the underlying security issues until 2013. We're not going to fix the underlying security issues until three years after the leak and until five years after we were infected by malware for some of the same security reasons. And, and that's, I mean, it's, it's a remarkable issue. And the other thing that's remarkable about it, um, Susan Collins asked one of the DOD representatives, like, 
how could this happen? And the DOD guy said, well, we took a risk. And what's clear, I mean, when you think about the way they're treating Bradley Manning, what's clear is that one of the reasons they're treating him that badly is because they're not fixing the security problems. And so they need to scare the shit out of people so that they won't do similar things. The problem with that is it might scare somebody who wants to leak, who's a whistleblower, but it's not going to scare somebody who's being paid a lot of money by Iran or China to download this stuff. Um, and so we have to assume, I think as, as citizens, we have to assume that this stuff is all available. The supernet is still wide open to people who have, who have a certain level of access or the ability to try and clip somebody as a spy. And this is the Department of Defense. And they're not doing really basic things to defend themselves um, against pretty basic technical uh, uh, compromise. And so, you know, you really have to wonder, was the information that secret? Is the information in SuperNet that secret? And if not, why aren't you actually doing, I mean, you know, DoD has a budget the size of the GNP of Australia. Yeah. And yet, they say we can't fix our security issues.